Carol Berner, 3130 Cambridge S, uh, F. <clears throat> Last time I spoke under written request, I used that dirty N-word, nepotism. What exactly is nepotism? It's a noun that means patronage bestowed or favoritism shown on the basis of family relationship, as in business and politics. After the June 5th meeting when I spoke about nepotism, I received an anonymous letter from an applicant who tried out for one of four part-time lifeguard positions with Ocean Rescue. The original was sent to all city commissioners and the letter was dated May 10th. I put in two public record requests to see the performance evaluations of all 25 applicants. Knowing how this city works, I knew I'd never received the records in time for this meeting. But I don't need the records to proceed. The anonymous, the anonymous letter stated that procedure is for all applicants to try out relatively at the same time. Yet two applicants tried out together, but on a different day than all the other applicants. Both of these applicants' last name is Noland. If anything reeks of nepotism, this is it. Is four paychecks from the city cough is not enough? What especially galls me is that you, Mayor Nolan, asked Alan West to look into nepotism at the Housing Authority, and in no way would Davis's family benefit from nepotism as surely yours does. It's my understanding that these jobs are on hold, perhaps waiting for the scandal to blow over. Mayor, it's just my opinion that you run the city as a mother. Do as I say, not as I do. I also recently learned that you're a grandmother. With all your photo ops, I'm stunned that the proud grandma didn't make this more public. I believe it's in the public interest to know the last name of the baby mommy. Excuse me, can I please interrupt? No. I have no idea no. why we have a personal attack. Mr. City Attorney, can you please comment on this? Anything that has to do relating to city managers to make my a point. Commissioner Gans. Please, please Section silence the mic on this. Can you please clarify this? Section 8.3 of the Rules of, per of Procedure prohibits personal and slanderous remarks. Any person making personal, impertinent, or slanderous remarks who shall uh, may be uh, prohibited from further speaking. Obviously, this is a ruling that must be made by the chair. The chair may be uh, reticent to do it because it's being aimed at, at her. And, I'm going to pass the gavel. Are you the chair? Well, you, anyone can make a motion on it. Well, why don't you just tell me and I won't excuse say anything? Excuse me. Excuse me. If a person is up here to make a point when it comes to city business, anything that pertains to that, but to getting into personal taxes, you just clarified. What is the motion that needs to be made to go ahead and... and the motion to direct the speaker uh, to uh, avoid the line of a personal uh, attack, uh, which is uh, which he is taking. And I can make that motion well, as the chair. Well, I'll make the motion. I'll, I'll second. It. There. I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, I've been forewarned. I really didn't know that existed. This is city business as far as I'm concerned, but I won't say a specific name. Um, I think we need to know the name so that we make sure that there's not excuse another me, family again, relationship me, again, on the paycheck. Again, we're talking about an infant that someone's going to go ahead and, and make an attack on Someone that absolutely lacks common sense. It is a personal attack. It's not relevant to the actual conversation, yeah, I have a question. Mr. City Attorney. Are you asking, you are up here saying that you need to know the name of her one-year-old granddaughter. No. No, no the, ma you, the baby you mommy. Her, you asked about her granddaughter. Excuse no, me. I said the baby mommy. Excuse me. The fact that you cannot use proper terminology. When that is a proper the terminology, the lack, of the lack of intelligence. The, the people That's exist. your opinion. Excuse me. I don't please think we're allowed to attack the citizens. Please have removed. Please. Under Section 8.3, you can, you, can, you can order the person removed. Have the person, the person removed, please, from the chamber. Yes, it really is a shame, yes, oh, well, it really is a shame that we have nepotism from the chamber here. Immediately. No, I do no, think that's, that's, that's a shame. Please, please have the person removed important. immediately. Please have the person removed. Okay, I have to get my stuff. Please have the person removed immediately. Happy July 4th and your First Amendment rights, everybody. 
I have to apologize for Century Village residents. Marty, to go back to my to go back to my point as I was trying to finish to say, when a person shows that cannot make an intelligent argument to a specific point that would go ahead and go to a personal level such as that, there's no place for this. There's a rule for that. People have the right to criticize us. People have the right to criticize our decisions. People can say whatever they want about us referring to that. But when they make derogatory comments that go to such a personal level, that this has got to stop. This has continued on long enough. We take enough. We can take that as ourselves. We can take that, especially when they're trying to make a point. But if a person lacks the, uh, lacks the vocabulary, the person lacks the ability to make a coherent sentence that is not so derogatory to the point and was just exhibited tonight and has been exhibited in the past, I think we need to stand up and put an end to it. Okay? People have the freedom of speech, but they cannot go up there and make slanderous comments like they just made. We've seen this before. And let's go back to this. I'm going to talk about this a little bit because, quite frankly, it's an embarrassment that all of us sat on our hands when this occurred, and including myself. I'm ashamed of it. There were derogatory attacks that were made that lent themselves to comments that were regarding a person's sexuality. When you're referring to a person by a, another gender name, that you can get up there and do something like that, that's an attack about someone's sexuality. Okay? That type of thing, that type of of uh, discrimination, a comment like that from somebody who supposedly is trying to hold themselves up to a higher standard, we should not sit silent to that. We did last time, and you guys may know what I'm talking about when someone refers to somebody, uh, let's say my name is Bill, they want to they go ahead and refer to someone by using their name differently and calling, basically referring to the person as a man or a woman or talking about their sexuality or anything like that. That type of thing should not go overlooked by this board. Okay? Make your point. Let's talk about it. If they want to make shots at us, that's fine. But when they go ahead and go to the level that just occurred, I think we need to stand up and put an end to it. Okay? We have our rights, that what are people are allowed to say and what people are not allowed to say. Clearly, the person cannot make a point without going into a level that's nothing but mudslinging and, and quite frankly, is pretty grotesque. I think we need to stand up and put an end to it. Thank you, sir. And my granddaughter lives in Louisiana, and she's beautiful, and I'm a very proud grandmother. You know, just real quick, if I could address a few of those um, comments. Number one, the reason why the whole issue with the positions are on hold has nothing to do with any scandals. It has to do strictly with budget. You know, I have the Parks and Recreation Director, along with um, the Ocean Rescue Captain, looking at, at the entire operation to determine whether or not we continue with will calls, which are the positions that are open, and whether or not we go to part-time or to consolidate them into one full-time position as part of the budgetary process coming up. Number two is, and I spoke with uh, the former Captain Lee Magnuson a couple weeks ago when all of this when these anonymous letters were sent in and this is common practice not only in our ocean rescue division but also around the state because you can't expect everybody to show up and it wasn't two people that tested on that day there were there was another person as well so it is common practice in fact they prefer it that way when i spoke to mr magnuson because Whenever you have 25 people out there and they're doing a swim test, you have to have lifeguards there to make sure that nothing happens while they're doing the test. So it's just a lot of nothing. So thank you. The, 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 when people come forward, the point of nepotism, okay, they have the right to make that point. It's a valid point. refers to city business. That's fine. I didn't have a problem with that. When it gets to the level that just occurred, there's absolutely no reason for it. It is not an intelligent argument. There was no reason to go there to sit there and, and, and take the ac take the approach that was just taken. It, and Andy, yeah, and a specific, please clarify that for me. There's a very specific provision that has been in here forever in our rules, and it says, indicates that any person making, and I'll just skip the other types of uh, personal impertinence or slanderous remarks uh, while addressing the commission may be requested to leave the meeting forthwith. Now, in this case, what the vice mayor did was first give the person an opportunity uh, to uh, to direct their remarks in another in another fashion. To get to their point, exactly. sure. Exactly. And when the person did not do it, um, the rules uh, provide provide for it. Fortunately, 
uh, we have not often had to call upon it, but uh, the rules do clearly provide for the action we took. Well, and I think there's been plenty of times where, where the line has been crossed and is muddy. I mean, good, healthy debate on issues and extreme criticism is fine. But getting to that level, what we just experienced tonight and what we've experienced in the past, enough's enough, in my opinion. We can do this. We can do this a different way. Thank you, Commissioner Preston. <clears throat> Commissioner Gans, I respect your opinion, and uh, and I think that it was overstepped. But I think we also uh, need to also keep in mind that um, the public must come first, and uh, there are certain things that I think that they should be able to say um, and express their feeling. This country allows you to do that. I watched a uh, a State of the Union address where the President of the United States was called a liar in front of everybody. To me, that was a personal attack. It was allowed. And so, therefore, you know, this country allows sometimes people to say things that are not popular and also that are not true. And so I think that we, uh, as a board, must be uh, careful that we do not step on what is rightfully um, given to every American, and that is the ability to express their opinion, although I may not agree with it, because I didn't agree with it. I, my personal feeling is that she did step over the bounds. But um, I've, I've seen that before, and on and much higher levels. I guess I'm a little confused with your comment. Uh, I think you were all in agreement that what occurred tonight stepped the boundary. Is that, is that what your point? You're saying that it did. But we have to proceed with caution to make sure that we're not stepping on people's right to make comments. Is that is that what you're saying? That's right. Okay. I, I think we all agree that the comment was unnecessary. The point could be made without going there, and and I, I think it, it it did cross the line. All right. It's people have called us liars. People have accused us of plenty of things up here, and we sat quietly, and that's fine. And I, and quite frankly, I think that's part of of the circumstance. That is part of the reality of this thing that we do. That's what happens, okay? We've taken it left and right from all different sides. But I think when the, when the lines get crossed, when people cannot get to a point except to stand up here and use their time to do nothing, nothing but abuse, belittle, and bully people, um, something has to be done on that. There's a way to have civil discourse that doesn't get to the point of being so down in the mud and so disgusting that we should sit quietly by and just do it because they have the right. There are limitations. The city attorneys lay the, out what those are. We have not had to go to something like this. We have not we have not utilized that tool. Okay, we've allowed people to say what they want and make accusations. But I think the line was crossed very clearly tonight. Well, my thing is that that you still have to consider. And the reason I say that we must proceed with caution, and I still say that because when you say that a person crossed the line, that can be subjective in nature. Where one person may think a person crosses the line, another person may not. That's what I'm saying. I think we've been overly liberal in what we've allowed and what we have not uh, at least tried to direct in a way that can be said differently. Um, Mr. Attorney, I'm going to let you comment on this as far as where the line is drawn, how the line is determined, and where do we get into an area. Yeah, I, and, and look, it, it, there, there is there's no question there's a subject, subjective nature uh, on it. and. I think you need to, we need to be careful, and I think this commission has. I mean, we rarely do this. Uh, um, I think what, what makes it clear that the line has crossed. Now, if, 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 I think, unfortunately, all of us up here are fair game. I mean, within, you know, dealing with our public, dealing with our public duties. Uh, you know, dealing with our public duties. Now, dealing with our personal life, I think that, you know, you would, you would, you would say they were crossing the line. When you get into... What, what seemed to me make it made it a no-brainer when she started asking the name of her granddaughter, implying that there would be something uh, uh, untoward dealing with her granddaughter. I think at that point, one, it's it's totally irrelevant to anything, and it's clearly meant to be a person. You know, it it it, it wasn't meant to uh, to advance any type of public discourse. But we we do need to be careful. I think in this case, the speaker made it easy. Uh, but there are times when it don't, and I do think my recommendation would be to give the benefit of the doubt to the speaker. 
And I think we have. Yeah. I, 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 I think we have. I, we certainly have. Yeah, I know. And I think, but I, as I say, I think the speaker made it easy when they started questioning about uh, uh, someone's granddaughter, as if that, especially, a, you know, I don't know how old, but a one or two year old granddaughter, uh, as if that could have any relevance uh, to, to anything. I mean, that's, that, that makes it easy. Uh, but, and, but I also think the proper move was to say, look, can you get away from that and move on? Because it, you are correct. We need to give the benefit of the doubt to the speaker. Because, um, you know, if it's, we're dealing with our judgment and it is subjective. Uh, and I think if there is a doubt, then you let the person continue to speak. Uh, uh, but I think in this case, I think we're all agreeing that, that, that you know, the, the speaker kind of made it easy for us. And, and the one thing about this commission, I will say, if you think, if you look over the, the past several years compared to where we were four or five years ago, uh, we have more public input. We have extended the time which the public speaks. We have opened up the public to be able to speak on numerous things that, quite frankly, was not the way it was in the past. All right. I think it, 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 everybody has given the opportunity to speak and say the things that they want to say, and quite frankly, they've crossed the line numerous, numerous times. We sat up here and had somebody ask, they wanted to know if a new employee, what color that person was. And we sat there quietly as if that was a tolerable question. Okay, it wasn't. It, and, and quite frankly, something like that crosses the line, in my opinion. It's irrelevant to the conversation. It is derogatory. It's racist. It's got no place for this, okay? I don't know where we draw the line on something like that, but I think, in, I think we need to start leaning ourselves to while we need to be very liberal in what people say up there, I also think we, at some point this is not acceptable to go to some of the, the, the depths and what people are willing to do. And you know, I, I kind of summarize something Mark Twain once said, you know, when you get in an argument with an idiot and you get down in the dirt, they're going to beat you up on the ground with experience. Okay, so we should not get down on the ground in this experience like that. We should just very be very short, tell them to get to the point, move forward. If they continue on with these slanderous and, and, and comments to get to the level of these just did tonight, I think we need to stand up and say enough's enough. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. Um,